But now the first pitch to Matheny as we move into the sixth inning. He's on the outside for ball one. Matheny has one for two, single sharply his last time up. That field, around toward right. They play this follow the pull. Mort works. Lets up pitches on the knees inside for ball two. Sort of a half speed pitch. First man up for the Yankees in the sixth inning, and it is no score. Cooper delivers. Fastball ripped in for a call strike. Two and one. After Matheny, then Johnson, followed by Kellogg. Mort Cooper pitching to Ken O'Day. Big right hander delivers. High outside for ball three. He's in the hole now, three and one. The Cardinal inner defense is as it has been all through the series. Sanders at first base. Klein at second. At shortstop, Marion. And at third, the indomitable Karowski. He's paid, he has played through a great deal of pain so far in this series, and he's played excellent ball. Gatfield, round toward right. The pitch in there for a call strike, and it is now three and two. Moving down to the Cardinal bullpen is Max Lanier, a strong arm left-hander, and he is beginning to warm up. There's his first warm-up pitch. There's his second in the bullpen. Cooper on the mound, pitches 3-2. Matheny fouls it into the left field stands, out of play. Still a 3-2 count. So that is a story in itself. Southworth, of course, is at the spot where he must use nothing but aces. Mort Cooper on the mound, bearing down in a scoreless struggle. In the bullpen, Lanier, warming up. He pitched the first seven innings yesterday. When he left the ball game, it was tied at one and one. Matheny up, three and two the count. Matheny finishing a great rookie year. Cooper delivers, but swings as a fly ball into short right. Underneath it is Musial waiting, and the right fielder gathers it in for out number one. Bill Johnson, who's gone 0 for 2, who has five hits for 18 official at-bats. Sturdy third baseman, right-hand batter. Johnson standing right off the plate. Most of his teammates call him Willie. That feels straight away on Bill at the moment. Cooper delivers. Johnson takes a fast call strike. Out goes Eddie Rommel's right hand. Rommel of the American League, back of the plate. Reardon of the National at first. Rule of the American at second. Stewart of the National at third. Johnson swings and goes all the way around missing, and it is strike two. The umpiring alternates are Pipgrass of the American League and Conlon of the National. A throw, swung on, hit back past the mound to short. Marion up, the throw in time, but five or six steps, and Johnson is out. And it is short to first. Charlie Callum, lugging a couple of sticks, makes his way up to batter's box, then throws the surplus one away. Crowds that plate from behind, spreads those feet wide apart. Two men out, nobody on, no score, top of the sixth. Still around toward right. Cooper pitches. Keller swings and misses. Ooh, that was fast. We just received uh, additional advice that uh, catcher Cooper has a compound dislocation of the index finger on his right hand from that foul tip off Frank Rosetti's bat, top of the fifth inning. A throw. Keller swings. Hits a bounding ball wide. A first in the right field. Sin for a clean base hit. And Keller with two men out. Singles to right. Opening up. Top of the sixth inning. That for Callum is his fourth hit of the series. The Yankees, it is their fourth hit off Mort Cooper. And now the totals are identically exact. No runs, four hits, one error for each of the two teams. Bill Dickey, who is 0 for 2, steps in. Tall, raw bone, left-hand batter. Playing in his 38th World Series game with the Yankees. a record of its kind. 
Dickey swings as a high one going out toward the right field pavilion. It is gone on top of the pavilion roof for a two-run home run. And Bill Dickey has run his home run home. And it is two to nothing in favor of the Yankees. There was the first crack in the superlative pitching of Big Cooper. Dickey caught hold of one. There was no question when it was struck. The only question was whether it would clear entirely the right field pavilion roof. It dropped in the middle of it. Nick Atten crouches at the plate, a left-hand hitter, and takes a fast call strike. It's two to nothing in favor of the Yankees. And the Cardinals know their task. If they do not erase that lead, they will erase themselves from the series. Etten takes high inside, going down on one knee out of the way of the pitch. Ball one. Bill Dickey, hammer to homer. Two runs are solidly earned. Two to nothing, New York. Cooper still bearing down. He doesn't let up. Delivers. Etten takes a sharp curve, high outside. Ball two. Two and one. Left hand to Lanier, keeps crawling away. Down on the Cardinal bullpen. Sam Narron is warming him up. Art Fletcher back of third. Earl Combs back of first. The Yankee coaches talk it up. Edden crouches at the plate, swings, fouls it off. Now it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Edden moves a little ground. He crowds that plate from behind. Wide open stands, feet close together. He stands facing the pitcher, in fact, and steps in the general direction of first base. The throw, swung on, there's a line drive, hit right at second baseman Klein, who takes it for the out. Two runs on two hits. Nobody left. And at the end of five and a half innings, it's two to nothing in favor of the Yankees. Now we'll talk about another batter, Stan Musial. Gibbs got about as keen a pair of eyes as anybody in the big leagues. He had to have his eye on the ball to hit that 357 this summer. But even Stan would take off his hat to the folks who inspect Gillette Blue Blades. Yes, sir, and so would you. For these skilled operators do things that are just as dramatic in their way as Musial's hitting. Equipped with special lights, high-powered microscopes, micrometers, every technical facility that you can imagine, these keen-eyed experts make sure that only perfect blades are okayed. 17 separate inspections assure absolutely uniform high quality. For thus, fans, you can count on today's Gillette Blue Blade, product of skilled craftsmanship, matchless equipment, relentless tests and inspections to give you the best-looking, most comfortable shaves a man can have. We pause now for station identification. This is Mutual. This is WGN, the voice of the people, Chicago. Spurgeon Chandler. Thrown down his last preliminary pitch to Bill Dickey, and the Yankee battery is set. The rest of the Yankee club of field as we move into the last of the sixth inning. Etten at first base. Joe Gordon at second. Frank Trezetti at short. And Bill Johnson is at third. The outfield has Keller in left, in center, Stain back, and come on, we'll pick up the rest. Here's the first pitch to O'Day, which is over for a call strike. The right fielder for the Yankees is Matheny. O'Day is up for his first time today. Came on catching last inning, and he is appearing at the plate for the second time in the series. He pinch hit back at the stadium and went out. The 10 batter. Chandler works on the outside. One and one. One ball, one strike. They play O'Day to pull. Round toward right. The score is two to nothing in favor of the Yankees. You just joined us. And the scoring was just done. O'Day swings and misses. And Chandler goes ahead of him. One ball, two strikes. With two men out in the top of the sixth, Keller 
drilled a clean single between the first and second baseman, and then Dickey hit the first pitch ball high up on the right field pavilion roof. A home run. Two to nothing. Chandler pumps twice, pumps three times. Delivers. There's a pitch high outside. O'Day almost chased it, but checked himself in time, and it's two and two. Billy Southworth taps his hands together. Peppery, fiery little fella down at third base. O'Day swings and beats the ball slowly down toward third. Johnson has to hurry, and he can't make the play at all. O'Day beats out a single to third. And the Cardinal fans here at St. Louis, sensing that perhaps the Cardinals are rallying, striking back, now applaud enthusiastically. A triple single down toward third. By the time Johnson came in to grasp it, he couldn't even make the play to first base. Didn't even try it. Hit number five off Chandler. And this means the batter is the potential tying run. Harry Strong, George Kurowski stepping in. One for two. Swings that wood from the end. Chandler delivers. Kurowski cuts and misses at a high, fast curve. Strike one. The outfield deep around toward left. Krauske stands there at the plate. Chandler stands there on the mound. High out in center field. Underneath Old Glory waves the Cardinals World Championship pennant. The pitch swung on and foul back into the stands. A pennant that Krauske had a great deal to do with making possible last year. It was his home run, if you'll recall, in the fifth game of the World Series that provided St. Louis with its World Championship winning margin over the Yankees. And now in the fifth game of this World Series, just a year later, Krauske standing at the plate. The Yankees lead two to nothing. And they lead in the count of games one, three to one. And so, the stakes are on the table. O'Day crouches, he leads off first, Chandler pitches. Krauske takes an inside curve, ball one. One ball, two strikes. Etten holding the inside corner of first base against the runner. Mike Gonzalez coaching it first. Nobody out. Chandler taking his time. Pounds a new ball down into the pocket of his glove. Blows on the fingers of his right hand, which is a mannerism with him. Now he comes carefully down into position, looks at first, delivers to the plate. There's a bounding ball, hit sharp at a short. Cusetti up, throws to second, one out. Gordon's throw to first, double play. Two men out and nobody on. A solid ground hit ball right at the veteran Frank Crisetti, who flipped it over to Joe Gordon, who in turn got it on to Etten. There was daylight ahead of each runner in each bag on the sequence. This is the first double play of game five. Two men out, nobody on. Ray Sanders, the tall, slender first baseman who has a single and a walk this afternoon, is up. A 10 hitter, out field toward right. Chandler's fastball is good over the outside and above the knees for a call strike. Two to nothing. The Yankees leading. Cardinals at bat in the last of the sixth with the two out. Chandler set. Delivers on the outside. One and one. One ball, one strike. Sanders so far has five hits out of 15 official at-bats. He's had a great series. It was his home run in game two that provided the winning margin. Chandler works and Sanders swinging hits a bounding ball straight to first base for Etten, who steps on the bag for the unassisted put out. Cardinal threat was silenced. No runs. One hit. Nobody left. It's two to nothing. Favor the Yankees. And that ends the sixth inning. Come in, Bob. Fellow fans, it takes coal to keep the hot stove leak going. But here's the really important thing. Coal is a war weapon. Without it, war production would halt, and it's scarce. So if you're able-bodied, particularly an experienced miner, you're needed in the coal mines of Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Montana. No matter what your present job may be, no matter how essential it is, Uncle Sam wants you to mine in the Northwest. Transportation will be paid to the mine areas where adequate housing is available. Wages are good. 42-hour week guarantee. Time and a half for overtime and double time on Sundays. So you experienced miners, you fellas plenty willing to mine coal if given a chance, go to your nearest United States Employment Service office 
and volunteer for this well-paying, more vital job. This is the old redhead being with you again as we go into the seventh inning. It's the last third of the Yankee hitting list of nine. Gordon, Steinbeck, and Chandler. Joe's up there, right-hand hitter. 0 for 2 against Mort Cooper today. Swings on the first pitch and doesn't get a three-quarter speed curveball, breaking down and away. Outfield is swung deep and around toward left on Gordon. Infield is a couple of steps around toward third. The pitch is a slow curve on the outside. One and one. One ball, one strike. Big Moore takes a lot of deliberation. O'Day stays low, back of the plate for a low target. Right-hander comes down. Gordon swinging, fouled off a low curve. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. O'Day rubbing up the new ball, walks in front of the plate. Now he comes stumping back the platter. Cooper sets the spikes of his right foot right down onto the rubber of pitcher's mound. His left foot half step back of the mound. He sort of rolls when he turns loose those pitches out there. Pumps twice, three times, delivers inside, and it is two and two. Mort looks out toward the scoreboard, check the count for himself. First man up in the seventh, two and two is the count. Gordon pumps that stick, now cocks it. Most straight in the air. Takes low outside for ball three. Three and two. Cooper working carefully. He's taking more and more time as the game goes along. He really didn't waste any time those first two innings. Struck out the first five. Delivers. Gordon takes high inside for ball four. Second walk given up for Mort. Base on balls to begin the seventh inning. And Lanier is again throwing in St. Louis's bullpen. George Steinbach, who has one for two, singled his last time up. That was the single down to short. The one that uh, went off Marty Marion's glove. Steinbach crouches and bunts down toward first. Sanders is up and makes the play over to first base to second baseman Klein covering. Steinbach sacrifices himself. And thus the Yankees give up one out to move Joe Gordon down to second base. That was the first baseman of the second sacker handling that play. So a walk and a bunt. One man out. The Yankees threatened in the seventh. They're leading already two runs to nothing. And a hand for Chandler. The Yankee pitcher steps in. Right hand batter. He had one hit for three at-bats in the first game. He's all for one today. Ward Cooper struck him out in the third. Chandler butted successfully a sacrifice in the fifth. There's a foul back onto the screen. Strike one. One away. Gordon at second. And Frank Crisetti is out on deck in the batter circle waiting. Big Cooper in position. A look at second pitches to the plate. A curve that is low. Ball one. One and one. Everything is moving now. You might say with very deliberate carefulness. Chandler digs in. Takes a curve that is over for a call second strike. One and two. Cooper seems to be pacing himself more and more carefully. Mort ready, throws, fastball high inside. That backs Chandler right out of the box. Two and two. One man away. Gordon stepping down off second. Big Cooper nods to the sign. O'Day is his catcher. His brother was hurt in the fifth inning. As a curve swung on, foul right back onto the screen. Still two and two. New ball in play. Pat O'Doherty, Yankee bat boy. 
retrieve that foul that came down off the netting a few moments ago. He really got a pleasant surprise. He'd been told that he wouldn't be able to come to St. Louis. And then at the last moment, he was told that he was going to make the trip. Chandler swings, hits a high fly ball, dead into short center. Johnny Hopp comes in under it, waiting. He has it. Two out. Gordon retreating and holding at second. Frank Crisetti, who has one for three. Crisetti singled in the third inning, and that was the first of the five hits off Mort Cooper. Crisetti has five hits so far out of 17 official at-bats. Digs in over the plate. Chokes that bat severely. Takes a quick curve that's over. Strike one. Gordon ready to go on anything with two out. Steps down off second. The Yankees lead two to nothing. Dickie Homer after Keller had singled with two out in the sixth inning. Cooper comes down. Presetti swings, beats the ball wide a third. Karowski has it. The throw is to first base in time for the third out. Now the thousands at Sportsman's Park, St. Louis. This is a Cardinal hometown crowd arising and standing and letting go. The last third of the St. Louis batting order of nine coming in for the last of the seventh inning. It is two to nothing in favor of the Yankees. The Yankees who need one game to return to a pinnacle which they have reached many times before as champions of the world. The Cardinals are still alive they're desperately trying to retain the championship of the baseball world, which they won from the Yankees last fall. Murray Dixon begins warming in the St. Louis bullpen, a right-hander. Lanier continues throwing. Apparently, uh, Southworth is figuring on a pinch hitter. Mort Cooper is slated to come up third here in the last of the seventh inning. And the Cardinal manager well knows that pitching does not mean so much to him anymore until he can get even. He's behind. Two to nothing. And so his strategy will have to be directed toward an offense. In other words, offense first for the best defense second that he can muster. The Yankees are in the other extreme. Everything for them is set on the defensive side. Johnny Hopp, who played at first base all the five games of the series last year, and didn't get into the series until the fifth game of this one today. Is up. Drags a bunt down toward first base. Chandler off the mound. Feels it. Throws to first in time. And Hop is out. He tried to pull a bunt with him. He's very adept at that. But the ball was a little too close to the mound. And Chandler, who can move, got off. Fielded it. And Hop on his bid for a bunt single is out. The pitcher to the first baseman. So that's Marion. Tall shortstop. It's a round of applause as he steps in. That's his 0 for 1 officially today. It's 4 for 12 so far for the series. Swings and hits a high pop fly back of third. It's coming down in foul ground. Johnson backing under it. And he takes it, squeezing it for the out. Two up, two down. And now will it be a pinch hitter? It will be Harry Walker. He and his two torn bat, who had played center field throughout this series until today when Southworth realigned his outfield. That's the official announcement. Harry Walker hitting for Big Cooper. And Cooper is out of the game. Harry Walker stepping in. Two men off. Nobody on. Last of the seventh. The pitch swung on. There's a high fly ball into short right center that goes in for a base hit. And Harry Walker drops a fly ball single at Texas Liga into right center field for a pinch hit single. Single to short right center. This is hit number six off Chandler. And the top of the order, Lou Klein steps in for St. Louis. There will have to be a new pitcher for the Cardinals in the eighth inning. Dixon right-hander and Lanier a left-hander are in the bullpen. Lanier's been down there a long time. He's ready right now. Klein digs in at the plate, swings and fouls it back. Right off the chest protective, catch a Dickey. One strike, two men out, runner at first. Last of the seventh inning, score remains 
two to nothing in favor of the Yankees. In the Yankee bullpen, Fordham, Johnny Murphy, and Atley Donald, both right-handers, are ready, keeping ready, probably will from here on out. Channel delivers, Klein swings and fouls it up and back onto the stands, directly behind home. Strike two. Murphy, the great relief specialist. He's already ready down in the Yankee bullpen. And Donald is throwing easily, too. Chandler and Dickey are going to have a little confab. They meet halfway between the mound and the plate. Probably check batter signs. Also check just how they want to pitch now to client to have two strikes on him. Two men are out. Harry Walker just pinch hit a single to right center. This means for St. Louis that the batter is the potential tying run. The Yankees, of course, uh, fully cognizant of the situation. Chandler, ready, delivers, and just misses with a slider on the outside and low. Spud didn't like the call. He started to walk off the mound when he saw Klein take that. Walked a couple of steps and, of course, goes back. One and two. Atheel swung slightly around toward left. Cannon position, delivers, curve swung on, foul back onto the netting. Still one and two. Dickey walks carefully out in front of the plate. Makes his return. Rhythmic hand clapping now. Begins going all through the St. Louis stands. Cardinal fans hoping for a rally. Fine strike three called. A curveball on the outside. Chandler started to walk from the mound and he kept right on walking. His sixth strikeout. Score is two to nothing. Favor the Yankees and that ends the seventh inning. And now a special message to servicemen regarding the distinctly new package of Gillette blades available only at post exchanges, ship service stores, and similar outlets. I'm talking about the camouflage package in khaki and green designed for men in the armed forces. The blades in this package are of true Gillette quality, made to fit your Gillette razor precisely. What's more, the edges are super keen and mirror finished, so you get swell looking shaves quickly and comfortably. You may have noticed that there is no mention of Gillette products or Gillette sponsorship of this World Series broadcast during the play-by-play -play account of the game. And that's because this broadcast is shortwave to our servicemen overseas, and Army regulations forbid commercial credit of any kind. So all commercials are brief and are confined to spots between innings when they are tuned out by the shortwave monitor. Gillette is proud to so cooperate with government authorities in bringing this World Series broadcast to our boys. 